proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, Fisherman's Luck. This is the exciting tale of three sergeants of the United States Army stationed in Europe, who, on a fishing trip, prove that casting can catch more than fish. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Right now, here's an important message for young men who are high school graduates. Never before in history has there been such a need and such an opportunity to serve your country and yourself as there is today in the United States Army. If you're qualified, there are careers open for you in radio, radar, weather, communications, and many, many other fields. So pay a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station without delay and get full details. And now your United States Army presents the Proudly We Hail production, Fisherman's Luck. Blue Lake was surrounded by lofty peaks. It was a scene that could belong to Maine or Colorado, but it didn't. The lake and the mountains were high in the wilderness of Bavaria. The three men in the rowboat were Americans. They were soldiers on leave, three sergeants on vacation. All three were holding fishing rods, but one of them was doing more talking than fishing. What am I doing here? How do I get swindled into these things? What's the matter? Don't we get enough nature all year round as it is? We get a leave? Where do we go? Shut up. He's scaring the fish. Got a strike, Jack? No. Lily pad. Look at us. What do we do? We go on a camping trip. Where do I sleep? In a sleeping bag in a tent. You're rocking the boat, Teddy. You still have five days in Paris, Teddy. Didn't get a strike, huh, Bob? I can't figure this out, Jack. And Pop sent me his own special plug. Swears it's caught him bass in every state of the Union. Yeah, but, uh... <laughs> These are German fish, remember? They never heard of your old man or his plug. All right, let's pack it in. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's another day. And these babies only bite at sunrise. Yeah, that's what the old man down at the village said. Gotta be up bright and early around here if you want to get bad. Gotta be up bright and early around here. Can I remind you guys of something? We're on leave. <sighs> Breathe that air, Teddy. Look at the view. Look at those mountains. Oh, I can breathe air and look at mountains on the Army's time. Pull in your line, Teddy. Yeah. Hey, hey, something's pulling. Hey, hey, look at his line. Hey, Teddy, you got a bass. What, 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 what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> reel it in, reel it in. <laughs> Jack, look. <laughs> oh, four pounds of fees an ounce. Don't give him any slack, you'll lose him. Grab the net bottle. Come on, now. All right, all right, all right. Teddy, don't bang him against the side of the boat. I'm trying. <laughs> got him. Hey, oh, boy, look at the size of him. Well, he's your fish, Teddy. Unhook him. <laughs> what do you mean, unhook him? He means take him off the hook. 
You mean you mean you want me to touch him? <laughs> Look at him. He's scared. What do you mean I'm scared? All I know is I'm out with two big deal fishermen, and I'm the only one who's caught a fish. Hey, hey fellas. What's the matter? Look. Two civilians. Huh? See? A man and a woman standing by the tent. Hey, hey, where's that woman going? She's getting in the car. She's trying to start the motor. Well, let her. I got the key. Hey! Hey, get away from that car! Grab the oars, Bob. I don't like this. What's going on? Hey, they're trying to steal our car. Easy, easy, Bob. Coming to the shore now. Hey, don't hit that rock. All right. Let's go. What were you doing in that car, sister? You, you are Americans. Are you soldiers? Yeah, we're soldiers. Oh, help us, please help us. Why'd you try to steal our car? Hey, Teddy, this guy's standing here. He looks ready to keel over. You're a medic. Hey, what's wrong? What's, what's the matter with you, buddy? Don't you feel well? He has been shot. Shot? By whom? Never mind that right now. Hey, Jack, uh, pull, pull that sleeping bag over here, will you? Yeah. Bob, let him rest on your arm. That's it. Now, just lower him. Yeah. Come on, fella. You better lie down. No. They're after us. Who's after you? You must get us away from here. They will kill all of us. Where's he hit, Teddy? On the shoulder. They've got a dressing on him. Hey, uh, get the first aid kit from the tent, huh? Please, right. listen. My brother and I, we were running away from them. There was a fight and Heinrich was shot. They must have followed us here. How many men are after you? Four, maybe five. They're armed? Oh, yes. Oh, that's great. We don't have a weapon on us. I have Heinrich's pistol. Oh, give it to me. Now, let's have the whole story. Who's chasing after whom and why? My brother Heinrich is a chemist. The Reds forced him to work for them. Yeah. He escaped to here, free Germany. They thought we were safe. They want him badly, so they found us here. There isn't too much I can do here. This boy needs a hospital and a, an operating room in the worst way. Oh. Company coming. Don't let them take us. Please don't. Well, Martha, Heinrich, here you are. Who are you, buddy? Police. I, uh, I wouldn't doubt that at all. And the question is, which police? This man who was wounded, the dangerous criminal, he escaped our custody. The woman is his accomplice. Yeah. Uh, the uh, four of you uh, gentlemen are police, you say? Correct. Well, show me your identification and you can take your prisoners. Meanwhile, I show you this pistol. You're obstructing justice, I warn you. All right, now, come on, show us your papers. You're obviously Americans and soldiers. Are you not aware that your army cooperates with the civilian authorities? Look, you prove that you're authorities and we'll cooperate. Now, there's four of you. Can one of you prove as a detective? I see. Very well. Dmitry Hunt, we shall leave here temporarily. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, how do you figure that? Well, they didn't want to tangle with us here for reasons of their own. We thought we would be safe here in the mountains. How's your boy, Teddy? All I could do was sprinkle a little sulfur powder and dress it. What did we get into, anyhow? Why should they have just gone off without a fight? There were four to our three. Well, we showed it one pistol. I don't know. Well, I have a reason. I'll bet on it. Uh, uh, miss, you say they want your brother. He's a chemist? Yes, he's an authority on foods. He has written books. Perhaps you've heard of him. His name is Heinrich Schneider. Oh, my name is Martha. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Sergeant Bob Somerville. This is Sergeant Jack Hastings, Sergeant Teddy Brown. Well, guys, it looks like we dealt ourselves into something. Let's see how much is in the pot. We saw four of them, Miss Schneider. Any more? I do not know. Heinrich and I were hiding in a cottage near the village. This morning, those men came in. We got away, but Heinrich was hurt. And, well, the rest you know. Yeah. Well, it's a cinch they went off just now for a lot of help. All we've got is this 
pistol and... Uh, well, that's nice and nothing. Clip's empty, no ammo. Then we can count on these guys coming back with friends. And a few guns. Yeah. We need help, too. Should be a phone at that inn down at the village. How about the civilian cops? No, I didn't notice any. Place is probably too small. Well, it's five miles down to the village. If we can make it to the phone, we'll be all right. Hey, uh, isn't one of our outfits stationed around here somewhere? Yeah, MPs are slicing in. Twelve miles from the village. Uh, look, rifleman, I hate to break up the meeting, but my patient needs action. Oh, well, he'll have to sit up in the car. Can he do it? He shouldn't, but he'll have to. Come on, give us a hand. Hey, what about our tenant stuff? No room to carry it, no time to pack it. Miss uh, Schneider, you get in the car, and Heinrich can lean on your shoulder, all right? <laughs> Easy now. Don't jolt him. Open the door, please. Yep. Hey, we got room for the fishing rush? Yeah, but come on, move. I'd hate to leave my pop special plugs here. I hope those guys aren't waiting for us down the road somewhere. Oh, they're waiting for us. Depend on it. We'll hear from them again. They know we got to go to the village. They know we got a phone for help. They must be making some kind of plan. Well, one thing I know, we have to get to the village before they do. <laughs> Bob, slow down, will you? This guy's hurt bad. Aw, oh, Teddy, we'll never get to the village at this rate. We gotta... I know, I know, but believe me, the bumps will kill this guy. Oh, brother. Oh, we're really in the soup now. Made it. Here's the inn. Yeah, I don't like it. It was too easy. Well, what do you think we ought to do now, Jack? Well, I'll go inside. I'll call the nearest civilian police. I'll tell them we need help. And then we ought to get the nearest army outfit briefed also. All right. Teddy and I will stay out here. Better get him to send an ambulance, too. Right. Is Heinrich better, Sergeant? Well, I'm not even hoping for him to get better. Just so long as he doesn't get any worse. Well, I'll be right back. Good afternoon. Can I use your phone? My telephone? I want to call the police. My, my telephone? Operator. 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 Hey, what's with your telephone? Obviously, the line has been cut. You? My friends and I have been waiting patiently. Hey, Sergeant, these men, they have a gun. They forced me to sit here. They say nothing. Be quiet. Now, we have no wish to disturb free, worthy American soldiers on their well-earned leaves. We will just relieve you of your car and of your passengers. I uh, think so. Uh, we left you in such a hurry before in order to procure firearms. See? Hans, Dmitri. Yeah? Bring the two soldiers inside. Yeah. We will tie all these up and get for ourselves a sufficient start. Bob! Teddy! Get out of here! Ah, hey, oh, right don't, you. don't shoot! Wait. Look into the floor! Get out of here! I'll get help! Oh. oh! Get out of here! Hey, Jack's in trouble. Come on, let's get in there. You gotta get help, fellas! Hey, Bob! Bob, we can't run away and leave him. Well, you think I want it? He knows what has to be done. But wait a he minute. He isn't we... yelling, help me. He's saying, get help. Those two men, they're running out the door. They won't catch us. Look out! They hit a tire! Look out, that tree! <laughs> you are listening to the proudly we hail production, Fisherman's Luck. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. 
The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young men, you are needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in the United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. And while you serve, you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. Everyone who wears the uniform of the United States Army is sharing in a service that is vital to our country. To each belongs the individual dignity which has characterized Army careers since the birth of our nation. In the Army, opportunity is open to all on an equal basis, affording its young members of today a chance to become technical specialists, instructors, leaders of tomorrow. You are urged to visit your local United States Army recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and ask about the technical careers in the United States Army. Remember, the need is urgent. And now your United States Army presents the second act of the Proudly We Hail production, Fisherman's Luck. Teddy, huh? you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Sergeant, my brother, is he all right? He's breathing. Well, don't look now, but our friends are here. Well, see what we have done now? Car is useless. We've captured you, anyhow. Step out. Well, the man's talking, and the man has a gun. We'll drag Heinrich out also. Carry him back to the inn. What do you want with my brother? Haven't you done enough to uh, him? Look, don't, don't irritate this guy, miss. He's mean enough normally, but with a gun, there's no holding him. Uh, your friend, he is waiting for us back at the inn. A little the worse for wear, but uh, nothing serious. Well, Chief, what's your next move? Uh, we shall obtain a vehicle somewhere and continue on our journey. Inside, please. Yeah. Jack. Hi, fellas. Jack, you hurt? Yeah, my eye feels like I got four of them, but look at our friends. I gave as good as I got. Uh, where's my innkeeper? You there. Sit behind your counter. Someone should enter. You will tell him you're closed. The Americans, Heinrich and Martha, will stay in that far corner, away from sight of the door. Hans, you sit here with your pistol, where you can see everything. Yeah. What are you going to be doing, Chief? Huh? <laughs> Dmitri and I shall go out to find a vehicle. Into that corner with you. They will take us back. I'm sorry. It is not your fault. You did what you could. We could have brought it off, too. Oh, what a lucky shot. They hit the tire of a car that was doing 50 at 100 yards. He could never do it again. That's a cinch. He doesn't have to. Once is enough. He can retire now. I want you to know that you're the bravest men I've ever met. This was not your fight, and everything was against you, and yet you tried. Hey, uh, fellas, when, uh, when these guys come back, well, what do you figure is going to happen to us? Well, I haven't been giving you much thought, really. Really? You want to work on it now? I, I can't see them saying so long, fellas, and uh, just taking off. Yeah, neither can I. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't help feeling that the three of us are jammed up just as bad as Heinrich and Martha. Hey, how is Heinrich? Well, I'd say he's got a chance to live if nobody wants to kill him. Before those jokers get back, we better have something figured out. There's too much talking. Uh-oh. We're going to have trouble with Hans now. Anything occur to you, Jack? Well, this guy is a good 15 feet away from us. Well, I better make it 20. If we rush, he can bag us all three. We'll chalk that one off. I said there's too much talking. You, you will sit on that bench. Sit. Oh, well, we might as well sit down. Yeah. Only to ease the dear boy's blood pressure. Ouch! What's the matter, Bob? Hey, what is what? Why did you scream? Oh, nothing, Hans, really. Nothing. Then be silent. What was it, Bob? The one chance in a million we got. Yeah? What can I use? 
How can I keep him from seeing me, Teddy? Teddy, get down on the floor and make believe you're tending to Heinrich. Right. Miss, you help him. Hey, you. What are you talking about? What? Talking? Is anybody talking? Block us as much as you can. You! Where are you going? Nowhere. I uh, just uh, have to dress his wound. Uh, give me a hand, miss. What is the sergeant doing? It beats me. Sit closer to me, Jack. Yeah, that's it. Now, without Anne seeing you, give me your shoelaces. Somehow we gotta get yours, mine, Teddy's. That won't be enough. I'll need Heinrich's, too. What for? Teddy, you're not blocking the view. You directly in front of Jack so he can get his laces off. That's it. What are you gonna do with the laces? I'm gonna make a line, a fishing line. I've got the plug in my pocket. I just sat on it. Now, shut up, Hun's blood pressure's going up again. Silence! The chief and his boy will be back any time. What's your angle, Bob? You just said it, Teddy. We're going angling, huh? You get enough from all the shoelaces, Bob? Looks like 20 feet to me. Yeah, but what are you talking about? My old man's fishing plug. I put it in my pocket. So if I can attach it to the end of this line, I mean, out of everybody's shoelaces, and if I can throw it at Hans without his spotting me... Oh, you're crazy. And if I can hit his gun hand with it, and we can rush him... How? Oh, how? Oh, you'll see what you're doing. Well, there's got to be a way to get him to take his eyes off us for a couple of seconds. Well, I have to hit him in the hand and pull. You can get to him, can't you, Jack? You make the cast, I'll get to him. This is the last time. I will shoot the next one who talks. Well, you boys had your chance. Now, uh, just watch me. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Hans. Sit. Look, I, uh, I have to get some water for Heinrich. Heinrich can wait. Heinrich can't wait. He's badly hurt, you know that. Look, he needs water. He might die. That is no affair of mine. What do you mean, it's no affair of yours? Your mission was to bring him back, was it? I said shit. Now, look, you, I'm a medic. My patient needs water. I am going to get him water. Give me any more lip and I'll take that pistol and jam it down your throat. No, 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 don't, don't be stupid. Look, look, there's, there's a sink just across the room. You can even watch me. My orders are no one is to move. I shall count three. If you are not seated, I shall shoot. One, two... Ah, uh, now, no, no, Hans, listen to me, huh? Uh, before you shoot, figure it out. Do your boys want Heinrich dead? Go ahead, ask yourself, do they? Now, if they did, you could have just killed him and gone home. But no, they want him alive, and he won't live without water, Hans. I... I am not concerned with that. Well, you better get concerned fast, kid. I'm telling you this because I like you. If Heinrich dies, what does it mean, huh? It means you failed in your mission. And what does your government do to guys who fail? Do they ask why? Do they care? All they know is you failed. Now, Hans, are you going to get all jammed up because of a little glass of water? Don't be crazy. I see what he's doing. Be ready, Jack. You see, Hans? I'm just going to the sink, see? Then I I just fill this uh, little cup of water, see? Yeah, yeah, I see, but uh, get away from the window. The window? Oh, sure, the window. Okay, Hans, you're through. There are police outside. Look! Huh? Whoa, whoa, now, Jack! Whoa. My hand! Hey, come on, pull on the line. His shot's hitting the floor. Yeah, let me help you, Hans. <laughs> Uh, yeah, good cast, Bob. Best I ever made. Now, let me see if he's got another clip in his pocket. Yeah, if he has. Shape up, you guys. A truck just pulled up outside and two old friends are coming in. All right, Teddy, take one side of the door. I'll take the other. Jack, help out if you have to. All right. Hans, let us go quickly. Hans! Hans is ill. Will we do? Oh! <laughs> Very tidy, Teddy. What do you say? We get everybody tied up into the truck. We uh, better not take a chance with Heinrich. Hey, innkeeper, is there a doctor around here? Yeah, yeah, I will go call him, and the police also. He has a telephone. It will be all right now, will it not? Yeah, I think so. Uh. 
Now, how are you feeling, Chief? See if he's got any papers on him and check him and his buddy for weapons. Yeah, must be a big wheel, this guy. I'll just take these guns, fellas. Hey, you want receipts? <laughs> Come around and pick them up again when you get out of jail, if you ever do. His name is Olenko. He's a captain in the secret police. Well, I'm sure Olenko and our intelligence will have a lot to talk about. What's the matter, Olenko? You look mad. Hans, Hans, how did it happen? You stupid swine! You did not watch them! Oh, leave poor Hans alone. <laughs> He's just a poor fish. You know, fellas, it uh, wasn't such a bad trip at that, was it? Just look at what we caught. Uh, you know, I, uh, I must write my pop a letter tonight and tell him about his plug. You know, it's like he told me. You use this plug, he said, and uh, uh, big ones will never get away. The word opportunity is described in the dictionary as a convenient chance, a favorable opening, as in business. Well, that definition can certainly be applied to the United States Army Medical Service when it comes to the opportunity they offer all qualified registered nurses. Because of our increased military mobilization, more and more opportunities, favorable openings in the profession of nursing, are now open for you in the Army Nurse Corps. For example, the Army Nurse Corps offers you a life which combines service with travel, work with recreation. You become a commissioned officer with officer's pay and allowances. You get free service insurance. You get paid vacation, retirement credits. In addition, you have the chance of taking postgraduate training in many nursing fields and thus qualify for further advancement. There are other benefits, too, such as worldwide travel, an attractive uniform, and the chance to serve with the finest men and women in the world. Most important of all, though, you can contribute your nursing skills to keep the United States Army strong and healthy, ready to perform their mission when needed. Registered nurses listening today Get all the details on how you can become an Army nurse. Write or wire the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to join us next week at the same time for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.